when you're documenting requirements, you want to make sure to, first of all, properly document them, but also make sure that those requirements that you're documenting are good. And that raises the question, what are the criteria or characteristics for a good requirement? So we could now come up with like some more general statements, what a good requirement looks like, uh, or we could have a look at some of the standards that tackle those problems. So the first characteristic that is very important is agreed upon. Requirements reflect the correct and agreed upon opinion of all stakeholders, so no conflicts left anymore. Um, the IEEE standard also suggests ranked, e.g. by legal obligations or priorities, like which is like more important. It's especially important if not all functionalities are provided um, with the same release, or when you have like budget constraints, like which of those requirements really need to be fulfilled, and which of them are optional. Another one that is really important is the ambiguity aspects. Make sure that everything that you document is unambiguous, it can only be understood in one way only, and conceptual models often help you to achieve that. Next would be valid and up-to-date. They must be consistent with the system context and not outdated. Some things might change. You need to keep track of them and make sure that you don't have any outdated information there. Requirements management, which we'll cover later, might be helpful in this regard. Um, correct seems to be super obvious, but yes, of course, your requirements represent the idea of the stakeholders and not something else. But it is a characteristic of a good requirement that everything is correct. And consistency being also among the really important uh, criteria. Requirements must not contradict each other. You must be the same level of abstraction and detail, and they should use the same documentation type where applicable. So you do not represent two requirements that deal with certain system behaviors using two different documentation types because that often leads to inconsistencies. And consistency being closely related to the agreed part, um, so there are also some interdependencies here. Next, IEEE suggests verifiability. The definition of a requirement must allow for its verification, for example, through tests or measurements, like how do I know whether the requirement really it's been implemented. Uh, realizability, requirements must be implementable within the scope of the project. What's the point of having a requirement that you cannot implement? Traceability, retracing of the origin, the realization, so the implementation, and the relationship to other documents. We'll talk about traceability in a separate lecture and go into detail with respect to those information. But still, like you get the idea, where did the requirement come from? How did this this requirement come into place? Was there some kind of a conflict? Uh, was it updated later on, like tracing all of those information? And completeness also makes sense and seems to be very obvious, uh, but requirements should be fully described and specified from the functionality. If not yet known, make it with or like add some kind of annotation or mark it as to be determined or something so that you know we have to get back to this before we can start implementing it. And then understandability, requirements must be comprehensible for all stakeholders. We talked about the challenges of communication, this ties back in with that lecture. There are also further characteristics of good requirements that are good to keep in mind that, that would look into like a little bit more detail now using some example. First, good requirements should be atomic. That means it is not possible to subdivide the requirement any further. And if you look at this example of a requirement here that states as part of the web shop, the customers may search for goods using keywords or product categories, you already get the idea of where I'm heading here. This is a rather big and vague requirement that needs to be subdivided into further more specific requirements. For example, regarding the search, as well as the product categories, as well as the web shop thing. So there, it's like quite big, it's like asking someone to just create another social network for you. It's not a good requirement. And ambiguity being yet another big topic, and also from those two examples, when you read them, you'll already get an idea of what the actual requirement like, is supposed to do, because most of you have used an ATM before, most of you have might use the steering wheel before, so you 
have implicit understanding of what's happening there, but they are not perfectly on point. So let's start with the first example here. In order to retrieve money from the ATM, the customer needs to insert a valid card and type in his PIN. If the validation fails, the machine keeps the card. Like first, like there are many things that are not quite clear and ambiguous here, but for example, what type of validation is performed? Do we check if the PIN is valid? And then if yes, how do we do this? Or does validation refer to having a valid card? And if the card is not valid anymore, the machine keeps the card. Does the machine keep the card after you typed in your PIN like, was like wrong or incorrectly the first time? Or do you get three, four, five tries? What exactly <laughs> is supposed to happen here? And the same with the steering wheel uh, for the car. When the driver turns the steering wheel, the direction of the car is changed accordingly. Uh, but does one turn of the wheel mean that the of the steering wheel mean that the wheel rotates completely? Uh, also, the direction and other information are not delivered here in an ambiguous manner. So there is something missing.